Hurricane Debbie officially made landfall in the state of Florida as a Category 1 hurricane earlier this morning, and it's not over yet. We're going to be dealing with this storm probably for the next week or so, anywhere from Florida and the Carolinas all the way back up into New England as we go into the upcoming weekend. You might be thinking, that sounds like a very long time for a tropical system. Well, the big deal is that this is going to be stalling in the southeast United States, bringing the potential for a catastrophic flooding event in both Georgia, South Carolina, Carolina and North Carolina, even parts of Florida as well, over the next several days. So in today's forecast, we're going to break down exactly what you need to know about what Debbie is going to be doing over the next several days, and why this storm is going to be a very big deal, even though it's only expected to be a tropical storm over the next week or so. So let's begin with what Debbie looks like on the infrared imagery right now, which we're recording this at about 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Overall, it is actually still a pretty impressive tropical storm. It's no longer a hurricane, but it is still pretty producing impacts that have been significant, like storm surge. We still have storm surge right on the Big Bend of Florida, which, by the way, it made landfall as a Category 1 hurricane. Maximum sustained winds of 80 miles per hour with a pressure of 979 millibars at about 7 a.m. just to the northwest of Cedar Key this morning. It has moved inland, and it is beginning to slow down rapidly, which is going to lead to a significant flooding threat today, tomorrow, Wednesday, Thursday, perhaps even into Friday of this week across the southeast. Lots of moisture continues to surge up to the north. We're getting our first rounds of heavy rainfall in South Carolina and Georgia. This is only going to start to propel that flooding threat as we go into the next few days. We are also watching for a localized tornado threat to ramp up this afternoon in Central Florida. It does appear to be a bit more conditional than previously thought, but we might end up seeing a few tornadoes depending on if storms can organize with enough shear. This is a closer view of Debbie on the infrared imagery. We've had less convection really bubbling up near the eye. You can kind of see one little tower tried to develop there, and it's not really doing it anymore. This is what happens when tropical storms or hurricanes move over land. They usually weaken out, and that's what we're starting to see. Unfortunately, though, there's just so much moisture down here that it's going to be very easy for this storm to continue to dump several inches and perhaps even feet of rain across the southeast over the next several days. Here's the latest National Hurricane Center cone of uncertainty, which it is still relatively large, but we do have a better idea of what's going to be happening over the next few days. And a couple of things I want to point out right off the bat, the wind field is not super large when it comes to tropical storm force winds in Florida. They don't even reach down to Tampa, so it's a relatively small tropical storm force wind wind field. But really, the bigger story is how slowly Debbie is going to be moving. Right now, it's moving to the northeast at about eight miles per hour, but it's going to be slowing down probably to two to three miles per hour as as this moves closer to the Carolinas. Notice this as we go into Tuesday morning. It's going to be pretty much just in southeastern Georgia, and then after that, it should re-enter back into the Atlantic Ocean, and it will attempt to re-intensify as we go throughout the week, but notice over a 48-hour period, this is barely going to be moving. It is going to be super slow, which could literally lead to a catastrophic event for those in the Carolinas and eastern Georgia. It reminds me a little bit of what we had with Florence only a few years ago. Florence ended up dumping upwards of like 30 inches of rain in some spots and back over North Carolina. This will be a bit further to the south more than likely, but it will definitely bring some similar impacts when it comes to rainfall. After Friday and Saturday, it is very uncertain where this goes, but we do think it's going to race up the north to the northeast and eventually go towards New England as we go into the weekend, and it could pose some more coastal impacts up there, perhaps even some heavy rain. The good news is, is that this will speed up, though, as it moves towards New England. It is not expected to stall up there, comparatively to what we're going to be seeing over over the next few days. The latest computer model runs still indicate that this will likely continue to slowly move offshore as we go into Tuesday and Wednesday. It'll eventually make another landfall in South Carolina or North Carolina, either Wednesday or Thursday. And then after that, it should go off to the Northeast. There are a couple models that bring this back to the West further. If that happens, it might end up weakening faster. But if it doesn't go that far to the West, we are still expecting this to still stay as a tropical storm for the foreseeable future. This is the latest storm surge forecast and overall these numbers have dropped as uh, initially obviously when this made landfall we were expecting the worst of the storm surge in the big bend of florida it is now down to four to six feet of storm surge there we are expecting upwards of four feet of storm surge from the mouth of saint mary's river all the way back over through the south sante river back over in south carolina so make sure that you're prepared for that storm surge will continue today across the west coast of florida it will taper down though as we go into tuesday now unfortunately we are going 
going to be dealing with catastrophic rainfall in South Carolina and Georgia and perhaps even parts of Florida over the next several days. And this is the latest forecast from the National Hurricane Center in terms of how much rain we can expect. And notice the darker reds and pinks. That is going to represent the potential for well over a foot of rainfall. The pink is indicating that we could see some spots upwards of 20 inches of rain, and we could even see some isolated spots that pick up as much as 30 inches of rainfall. So you need to make sure if you're in these areas, either you're taking evacuation orders seriously or that you are prepared for a multi-day flooding threat here across South Carolina and Georgia. Even back up into North Carolina, we could see some spots that get around a foot of rain and even back through parts of eastern North Carolina. Many spots will have the potential for upwards of 6 to 12 inches of rain. Northern Florida is not really an exception. We do have a flash flood emergency in one par part of Florida back over in the Big Bend due to all the rain that's falling. That is something that's going to be very common over the next few days. So be prepared again for substantial rainfall across anywhere up and down the East Coast here, especially though in the darker shaded regions. But today's tornado threat is supposed to be a little bit on the higher side of things, in my opinion, but so far it actually hasn't been. We're at about two o'clock right now at the time I'm recording this forecast. There is a lot of wind shear out there, and if any storms can organize, we could have a tornado or two back over in central Florida. But thus far, nothing really indicating that we're going to get much of a tornado threat. But be weather aware all the way through about midnight tonight. If you are in central Florida near maybe like the east coast of Florida near I-95, that's an area that we'll be watching for, for maybe an isolated tornado or two. Tomorrow becomes more of a fish NATO day back over just east of South Carolina. We are probably going to have several water spouts tomorrow, and we could see a few of those come ashore in South Carolina near Charleston, back between there and Savannah. So make sure that you have a tornado action plan in place. Unfortunately, flooding and tornadoes do not really go hand in hand, meaning that you might have to seek, you know, above ground shelter when there's flooding and below ground shelter when there's a tornado. It's one of those situations that, again, if you can't evacuate, it's probably not at least a bad idea to do so um, in parts of at least South Carolina. This is what the rest of the day looks like in Florida. We'll continue to see some storms across parts of central Florida, low top supercells that could produce an isolated tornado or two. By around 7 to 8 o'clock tonight, I think most of that activity is done in Florida, maybe just one more brief tornado after that. And then as we go into the overnight hours, eventually into Tuesday morning, there will still be some storms out there, especially in southern Florida. But the good news is, is that I do think a lot of this activity will be winding down in Florida as we go into Tuesday. So cleanup efforts and all that can at least begin across those areas. Here's what the timing looks like in the Carolinas and Georgia. Heavy rain will continue all the way into the overnight hours back over in eastern Georgia. South Carolina going to get hammered tomorrow with rainfall. The HRRR model has some breaks of this rain for times at least Tuesday evening, which would be good news if that does happen. But again, the HRRR model is not a hurricane model, so it is a little bit you know dicey when it comes to these scenarios. But overall, we would expect at least heavy rainfall to continue even throughout Wednesday in South Carolina, bearing any major changes. Total rainfall accumulation through Wednesday morning, according to the HRRR model, still indicating a widespread area between 6 to 12 inches of rain. We could see some spots over a foot of rain as well back over near Savannah. Keep in mind that these rainfall totals are only through Wednesday morning, and it very well could be double this in some spots as we go throughout Thursday and even parts of Friday. So that's definitely something that you want to keep in mind. The winds are not really going to be a big deal with this since it is going to most likely only be a tropical storm, maybe re-intensify to a low-end hurricane as this moves back into the Atlantic Ocean and up the coast. But if it just can stay along or inland, it will likely just be a tropical storm and we'll really be talking about just tropical storm force winds. Some infrastructure will not be able to handle these type of winds around 40 to 50 miles per hour. So plan accordingly. There could very easily be power outages and those could last for several days, especially if we have a major flooding event as it is currently forecasted to be. This is the European model over the next few days, indicating that this does move back into the Atlantic and actually sits there for a couple days, tries to re-intensify to near category one intensity, and then moves inland as we go into late Thursday into Friday. This would bring again a multi-day flooding event, which every model at this point is showing something like this, where we are going to be talking about a significant flooding threat, widespread six to 12 inches, with many areas likely to get up near 20 to maybe even 25 inches of rainfall. Now for the rest of today, we do have two slight risks that indicate a tornado risk. We have a 5% tornado risk in the Midwest today, which I do question a little bit. I think today's threat will be a bit conditional. Also have a slight risk that goes back throughout parts of the Northeast. We actually had a tornado over in Buffalo, New York that was on the ground briefly earlier, so a little bit of a surprise there. Main concern again today will be damaging winds and hail. There could be also a couple of tornadoes in the Midwest and are also maybe a few tornadoes in the Southeast. I'm not sure if we're going live again today for either one of these events. They don't appear super concerning, but if something does come up and I am in the weather studio, I will try to go live for I am not sure what my plans are for later today. And again, overall, the main concern
concern. Probably going to be between about 5 or 7 o'clock when it comes to the Midwest threat. And the Southeast will probably be sometime between now and about 6 o'clock for the main concern. And so far, not much has happened in the Southeast. I'm not really thinking the Midwest is going to be too crazy. But if it does go crazy, and again, I'm in the weather studio, we'll be live. But if not, then, you know, just make sure they have multiple ways to receive alerts. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to click the like button down below and subscribe if you've not already.